uh, I'd like to thank the grace of heaven, the virtues of the masters, the compassion and mercy of the grand predecessors, predecessors, uh, senior transmitters, transmitters, uh, temple masters, lecturers, and everyone for giving me this opportunity today to learn to speak about today's topic, which is the uh, Tao Te Ching chapter 74. <clears throat> okay, so um, this uh, 74, it's it's uh it's a little bit below average length but it's 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 not a long chapter but it's a it's a very interesting topic the 74 chapter 74 is titled master executioner or chief executioner or executioner in charge or great craftsman great carpenter okay so it's divided into two major sections first section has a subsection it's basically making a statement uh, basically uh, asking whether or not uh, the deterrence you know, of death penalty, I, I, the fear of death as a deterrence, whether it works or not. And then uh, uh, second section of uh, the second half of section one talks about, you know, what, you know, what most people think, you know, what, what most people, rulers or whatever, think, think about about uh, you, uh, about the fear uh, about death, okay, the punishment by death, okay, and then the last section, uh, he, he, he Lao Tzu was using some metaphors, visual metaphors, to sort of to describe how the Tao functions and how reality really works, okay, or, or you know how reality really is, all right. So that's uh, chapter seventy four, okay. All right, so let's go to the outline. Uh, yeah, this is uh, longer than I expected. It might, I don't know, I might be minutes or so. Maybe. Okay. All right. So we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. A uh, couple stories here. But anyway, okay. Uh, all right. Okay. So the first um, sentence is people do not fear death. So how can they be threatened with death? Right. You know, okay. So when people do not no longer fear death, right. So basic meaning is that what happens? when people no longer fear death, okay? So um, now this fearing death, he's not referring to uh, people, you know, uh, uh, you know, people who became spiritually enlightened, you know, uh, and so therefore they, they no longer fear death. You know, they, 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 they understand, you know, the reality of, you know, life and death or birth and death, you know, the real nature, okay, of it. All right, so that's in chapter 50, right? We talked about that. There's no place, that's the last sentence or last phrase, whatever, okay? So it's, it's not about that, okay? That, that's not about that, all right? So the, the, this, 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 this sentence does not refer to, to that, okay? So what it does refer to is this, is that although people, he, he, no, physical death, although people fear, usually fear death, right? Physical death, there are situations so when that's the case, even not okay, because when someone is in the grips of extreme emotions, or you know, people say you know they're not in a stable state of mind, you know, okay, or rational, you know, rational state of mind, okay, you know, all right. So, so for example, I mean, come on, we we we've, we've had this experience before, right? Anger or rage caused us to do something that we would normally do. No, no, I mean that's sometimes you're so angry. So so mad that you know you did something that you know you're going to regret or that you know that you otherwise would not do if you weren't angry or you know right so okay so so i mean that, 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 that that's you know once again these are all emotions okay or you know some people have you know an extreme desire for either revenge retribution or striking back they they no longer care if they live or die they, you know, some people are like that, right? I mean, they, they, their, their, their state, their, their, it's their emotional state, or you can say their, their, their state of mind is such that, you know, they, 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 they either hate somebody so much or, or you know, thirst, their, their, their thirst for revenge, you know, or, you know, retribution right, is so strong that they, 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 they don't care, that they don't care, you know, or, or the, you know, they don't care whether or not they die they live or die, you know, that the, the, the idea of them, you know, dying is the furthest removed from their minds. Okay. So, so, you know, there, 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 there are people like that, right? Okay. Or 
you know, if you are so desperate, you know, you, it's like you're, you're, you're fighter for your, your life. You, you're cornered. You're like a cornered animal. You're, you're cornered. It's either kill or be killed. Okay. It's, a, you know, you, 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 you have to survive. You, you have to do whatever it takes to survive. Do anything or kill, do anything or even kill anyone just to survive. You know, a kill or be killed situation, right? These are, these are very extreme, right? And it's also pretty, you know, stressful emotionally. And, and you might even say, you know, it might be, you know, beyond the point of a rational state of mind, right? You know, a, a reflective state of mind, right? I mean, you know, so, 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 so in these circumstances, I mean, this is just a few, I mean, you know, I mean, you know, a few examples that, you know, the, the, the idea that, hey, you know, if you kill somebody, you know, we're going to punish you by killing you. I mean, that, that thought <laughs> no longer happens, okay, if you're in the state of mind, all right, in these states, you know, all right? Okay, so, so when, now, there's another way to look at it is that when people no longer fear death, there is no grief, grief or sorrow greater than when the heart dies. Where one's heart has already died, that is the greatest sorrow. So, so it, you know, th th this refers to people who, I, you know, I, I don't want to be uh, 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 callous or anything, but, you know, when people have reached a very stressful, or, or I don't want to say stressful, but, but they feel that they are at a dead end, okay, uh, and that they no longer have, have, have this will to want to live. You know, so 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 I would say, you know, like 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 what category people would be like that? It's different from this. It's different from this category. Okay, that the first first. It's different from this. Okay, it's it's like these are the people who are like, um, you know, very depressed. You know, you know, you can say depressed is if one it is what one category. Okay, or you know, people who are suicidal. That that's another way of looking at it. Okay, it's it's like this. Okay, so. So, you know, it's sort of like saying that their heart has died, meaning that their spirit or will to live has pretty much gone, okay? So, you know, people who are suicidal, people who are depressed, right? Usually that's one of the big reasons for suicide is, you know, they're just depressed. They can't either take it anymore or, you know, they don't, they don't, you know, just the will to live has died, okay? So, so that's another group of people, right? So, 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 you know, for them, you know, you tell them, hey, you know, you know, when, if you're in that state and people tell you, and you know, the, the government or the society tells you, hey, you know, if you kill somebody, you know, you're going to die. To them, it doesn't matter anymore, right? Uh, they, they probably welcome it. But anyway, okay, all right. So, so there, there, there are cases, okay? All right, all right. So, so it's not a, uh, it's not a hundred percent thing. Okay, now. Uh, the second phrase, basically, we're saying, now, how can people be threatened with death if they no longer fear death? Now, uh, on one level, it could, it's talking about, okay, uh, okay. So, so in these situations above and others, that 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 that's what we're talking about. The first three here, these three, and this. Okay, so so in, in those situations, right, the threat of death has no power, right? Like I said before, but then on the on a kingdom level, that means on a, you know, on a ruler, when people who are ruling, when rulers do not understand the Tao, they tend to rule by threatening people with the fear of death, okay? But that threat no, is no longer effective when people lose the fear of death, right? So, so that's what that, that first line, you know, Lao Tzu is saying, also addressing that, hey, you know, as a ruler, if you don't understand how Tao works, or you, if you don't, you know, if you don't follow the Tao or whatever, you don't, you know, and you, all you, all your, 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 the way you rule is just by, you know, threatening people with the fear of death, you know, okay, you know, it's not going to work when people no longer fear death, right, you know, okay, all right, so, all right, then there's another, another way of saying is that when people no longer fear death, if you use capital punishment to deter people, it will not be effective, all right, uh, well, we'll get a little bit more, a little bit detail uh, later in the second, uh, in the next section, um, you know, there, there are a lot of surveys done and everything. Okay, but, uh, research done about it. Okay, all right. Now, at a personal level, law refers to personal level. So if you're fighting for your own survival, right, you're not worried about the consequences of your actions, right? I mean, you, you know, it's, you know, kill or be killed, right? If you're in a situation, you know, you're, you're not going to stop and say, hey, you know, if I kill somebody, you know, I could be put to death, you know? 
<laughs> because you're already fight, you're fighting for your own survival. If you don't do anything, if you don't kill, you know, you're going to end up getting killed anyway. So, okay. All right. So and another setting is now here, 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 here's where, you know, here, here's another, it, this is more specific to like, if you threaten to kill fighters in the battlefield, you know, you know, warriors, fighters, whatever, the soldiers in the battle who believe in their cause, that will not stop them. Right. So, so, you know, threatening these fighters, warriors, soldiers, etc., with death, that's not going to deter them because they believe in their cause. So they're willing to die for that, you know, belief or cause or whatever that they're fighting for. So like, you know, so for example, you can't deter suicide bombers with capital punishment <laughs> because they're suicidal, right? They, 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 they want to die. <laughs> so, 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 you know, if you tell them, hey, suicide bombers uh, or would be or would be suicide or want to be suicide bombers, you know, you know, we capture you, we're going to kill you. So what? <laughs> they don't care. <laughs> so, so, you know, they, okay. So, so those are the, you know, these are the very extreme, right? You know, circumstances or exceptions to the rule, right? When people no longer fear death, the threat, you know, the threat of death is, is no longer effective. All right. Now there's a gen deeper meaning of the death. That, what it means uh, on, on a general level, intangible, it's just negative consequences due to one's thoughts or words. Okay. So that's, that's, that's what it is. Yeah. Negative. It's negative. That's why it's death. Okay. A specific, it means being heartless and mindless, losing compassion, losing conscience or humanity. You know, they say withered heart or mind or spiritual death. All right. Okay. So the deeper meaning of not to fear death means it's not to fear or care about the negative consequences, right? Or not fear being heartless, mindless, not fear being, you know, uh, in, uh, 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 losing compassion, losing conscience or humanity or fear spiritual death. All right. So now here's the more abstract level and it's that's the intangible in, in internal level is that when your thoughts no longer fear that's the people okay that's the people the metaphor for people no longer uh, the the yeah the metaphor for thoughts are the people no longer fear or care about the negative consequences consequences so how can the thoughts be threatened right by the loss of one's compassion conscience or humanity they don't care right thoughts because they you no longer care about the consequences so the implication is this on the kingdom level or society, it's not a good way to rule by threatening, you know, people with, you know, fear of death, you know, or, or with, with capital punishment. So that's when people, when people no longer fear death, you know, capital punishment is no, it's, 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 it's not that useful, not effective. All right. Okay. Um, so this means that rather than ruling people, uh, what Lao Tzu has a point here, he, where he's trying to, Tell, at least to the ruler level to the, and to society in general is that rather than to govern people using the threat of capital punishment, it is far better for people to regulate themselves according to their conscience. Yeah, that, that's the more ideal, ideal approach. Okay, for each person to govern themselves is the most ideal where we are able to manifest our honest and, honest and simple self nature or Buddha nature. This way, our lives in this material world would be different, right? So, so I mean, this is the most ideal. That's the ideal way, okay? So, you know, so, so you know, that would be the, uh, you can say the utopian way, you know, the utopian, you know, utopian-like society where there's no threat, you know, to, you know, to the people, you know, with the threat of capital punishment, okay? You know, just like, uh, like everybody govern themselves, self-govern with their own conscience, by their own conscience, okay? So that's the ideal. That's the most ideal. Okay, all right. So let's go to section, uh, second part of section one. So, so he, he, here's what he's saying, you know, what most people would think. So if people are made to constantly fear death, then those who act unlawfully, I can capture and kill them. Then who would dare them? You know, how, how would people dare to, to, uh, to uh, act unlawfully or be criminals, all right? Okay, so basic meaning is that the conventional thinking is that you can control people through fear, make sure people fear death and then threaten them with death. So throughout history, people have been controlled and manipulated through different kinds of fear, such as the fear of death, okay? So that's, that's you know, we've seen this in throughout history, okay, different societies, past, all right? So that's the conventional wisdom, okay, or thinking, all right? So. At the society of kingdom level, it's usually the feckless, incompetent, inept, or unremarkable rulers or unimaginative rulers that will think along these lines. 
you know, hey, it's simple, right? You know, how do I control, you know, a society, make sure that people, you know, obey the laws or whatever, or obey me? You know, I, I threatened them, you know, with death or the fear of death, okay? All right, so this is the automatic default or go-to position of these in that ruling class. This is the unimaginative way of ruling a kingdom. That is through the threat of death, capital punishment, et cetera, all right? So this is because these inept rulers do not know the Tao or do not understand the Tao and thus lack the wisdom to rule in an enlightened way, all right? Okay, so, so uh, now there's a personal, it involves personal level, is that in your personal interactions with people, if you are prone to anger or rage or have a tendency to lash out at others where they are fearful of setting you off, they have to tread carefully with you and cautiously interact with you in order not to get you, not in order not to get uh, in order in order to not get you angry. Maybe that's another way. Okay, in order to not get you angry. Okay, okay. Then you are ruling your life through the fear of death. Okay, just like an incompetent ruler. All right. So at a personal level, we should not. Uh, be like the incompetent ruler also, all right, by, you know, having this tendency to, you know, to, 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 to use anger or rage or fear, you know, to, 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 to uh, intimidate people, all right, basically, okay, all right, so, uh, then there's the second phrase, which is, second and third phrase, which is, um, <clears throat> You know, those who act unlawfully, I can capture them and ki- uh, capture and kill them. You know, so, all right. So what, what, what that means is that if people stray outside the boundaries of the law, you know, i.e. criminals, then I will catch and kill them. That, that's basically what, 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 what that's the, how most people think, right? Especially rulers, right? Or, okay. So <clears throat> to capture and kill criminals without any extenuating circumstances and any consideration of any factors, very rigid, black and white, no flexibility whatsoever. This is the conventional wisdom, uh, thinking that does not take into, take any other factors in account. See, so it's a very uh, straightforward, you can say very rigid, inflexible way of thinking or, 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 or looking at things. Just in this case, in terms of, you know, going outside the boundaries of law, you know, you know, you know lawbreakers, okay? So it's a very, very strict draconian uh, uh, approach, right? To to um, to you know keeping law and order, for example, or maintaining law and order is to say, hey, you know, if you you know, you know, the law is A B C, and you know you did X Y Z, and therefore you know you you know if you're caught, you're going you know, or I'm going to catch you. And 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 you, I'm gonna kill you. Okay, so it's a very inflexible, very, uh, how can I say, very inflexible, rigid, narrow view. Okay, now we've seen this in previous in his in throughout history in previous societies, etc. Uh, you know, like like in in, in certain um, periods of history. You know, it happens in Europe in yeah, all over the world, pretty much Asia. You know, where sometimes they have the crime. That's kind of that are the punishment. Sorry, the punishment is way beyond the crime, or you know, the the, the degree of the crime. The, the degree of punishment is like, like I think um, you know, if you read um, you know history, I mean, there's a famous Broadway show. It's called it's called Les Misérables. You know, the Miserables. I think Les Misérables. It's it's from one of the French. I think is it Victor Hugo? I forgot. It's one of them. <laughs> that 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 that. that uh, very well-known French uh, writer uh, of the what's that, 18th century, 19th century. Anyway, um, you know, one of the punishment, you know, this is this is during when you know, when they're still ruled by the king, the Bourbon king. I think it's Louis. I forgot it's Louis the Eighth. No, I, I forgot. It's one of those kings. Anyway, uh, France. The law is so strict, such that um, if you were caught stealing bread, <laughs> stealing bread, you know, because people are starving, you know, they have. Okay, you know, poor people, gotcha. You get a life sentence. <laughs> you go to jail for life. I mean, that that's you know, that's very disproportionate, right? Anyway, okay. So anyway, so so that's the idea. Okay, so now generally that's how a ruthless tyrant rules. 
And so that's a negative way of ruling, right? It's, it's looking at negative saying, hey, you know, you know, people are bad or people are in, you know, that, 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 that we'll, we'll talk a little bit about later in, in, in there to end is that this, this was a school of thought. It's called legalism in, in ancient China, 2,500 years ago, 2,400. Legalism, fa jia. It's, it's, it's like they're, they're saying, they're basically, their, their pro proposition or their thesis is that, it, or, or the, the basis of their of, the, of, of that belief is that, you know, people are inherently bad, inherently bad. So therefore, you need very strict rules or laws to make sure people, you know, don't manifest those bad uh, uh, traits, characteristics. Okay, so 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 you know, so it's very very ruthless, elite, you know, uh, very uh, draconian set of laws. Okay, all right, okay. So so let's go for. Oh. I'm losing the time here. Okay, so at the personal level, this means that it it's describes a very dogmatic, inflexible individual, someone who does not understand shades of gray. That means, you know, in between, you know, in between the two extremes, okay? So on the external level, it just means a person is, is very dogmatic in dealing with other people and easily take offense or feel, feel insulted at anything, okay? So people are very dogmatic, or easily, you know, insulted, uh, etc. Okay. At the internal level, <clears throat> okay, it the, it, it the person does not allow or permit the ability to think of different perspective or views. I should say different perspectives or views. Okay, or to have different levels of understanding and to be empathetic, empathetic with other people. So that's what a constant mind means, okay? So, so, so as Tao cultivators, okay, we, we must all transcend this type of thinking, okay? To have a very constant mind, a rigid mind, a rigid, inflexible mind. Okay, that's, you know, that refers back, we already talked about it in chapter 49, all right? Sages have no constant mind, okay? So, so, all right? So, so that's what we, we have to avoid, okay? Now, at the kingdom level, this is the last phrase about who would dare, you know, how, how would, would anybody, would people dare to, to, uh, to go outside of the law, you know, because I'm going to catch them and kill them anyway. So, so, you know, so people don't dare. So at the ruler level, the incompetent rulers, they resort to fear. So that's the only way they know, and it does not work. Okay. Because we've seen that throughout history, right? You cannot, if you root by fear, it may work for a while in the short term. But in the long run, it's not going to work. All right. Okay. So the reason why inept rulers resort to fear to oppress the people is because they fear what will happen if they do not use the oppressive power of fear. <laughs> so they're trapped by that. It's it's a by that cycle of, of thinking, saying that hey, you know, if, if 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 you know, they fear what would happen to them if they don't use that power of fear on others, okay? So, so it's a very negative, so it's a very negative, negative approach, all right, okay? Or vicious, okay, cycle, all right? So, so on the personal level, as the ruler of your own life, you need to have some self-reflection. You should also examine the role that fear plays in your life in all its different manifestations, such as in your interactions with other people. Do you let fear rule you? You know, or are other people reluctant to tell you the truth because it may set you off? So we should, you know, so, so you know, reflect a little bit, have some self-reflection and, and see if we really do try to, uh, you know, what, you know, do we, ha do we you know, how, how does fear play a role in our life or does it? Okay, all right. All right, so the further understanding, and this is the other, op the other approach is that on the positive approach is if one can value and cherish one's own life, instead of the fear of death, then one will not fear to do evil or commit crimes, okay? So, so the key to, you know, to, to, to get people not to commit crimes or to deter people from crime is to get people to value and cherish life as opposed to fear death, get it? Okay, so, so that's, that's the, more, the more positive view, okay? Now, a positive approach, okay? So, so on the internal side here, 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 here's what it is, is that, when you constantly force your thoughts, that's the people, okay, to fear the negative consequences, right? Because, you know, you, the one way that we catch ourselves to have, you know, to prevent us from having negative thoughts is to say, hey, you know, 
you know, threat, you know, threaten, threaten them. It's that the them then would say, hey, there's going to be negative consequences. Okay, you know, so, so so by stopping, that's the catching and suppressing or the killing them, the thoughts, so that no negative thoughts will dare rise. But sooner or later, though, those negative thoughts still arise, right? Don't we have all this happen to us? Because because if we could do this, if let's say this works, if let's say this works, then no negative thoughts will arise, right? I mean, if it works, if that's the uh, method that works, but it doesn't. Okay, so. So why? Because, here, because it's the brute force method of using fear to suppress thoughts or anything for that matter is only dealing with the symptoms, not the root cause of why negative thoughts arise. Okay, recall in, uh, recall in chapter 72 is that when something becomes extreme, in this case, suppressing, always suppressing your thoughts. You know, it must reverse course. When you suppress anything too much, you end up achieving the opposite effect, right? When people no longer feel force, they bring about greater force. That's chapter 72, all right? Same idea, okay? You know, you go to, you, you, you can't resort to extreme means. That's the whole idea, okay? All right, so, so this is where it's, it, it, the reason is. So if this above method is truly effective, that is to constantly, you know, suppress thoughts or, or uh, uh, have people fear death, right? That's, that's the extreme, right? Then why do negative thoughts still arise? Why? Because it's due to our six roots or six senses. That's overriding our conscious mind or our rational mind or whatever, which gives rise to all negative thoughts. So if we become too attached to our six sensations or six consciousness, then our conscious mind, the ego, will not be able to catch and suppress thoughts that arise from the six senses. That's why Tao Kodeir the cultivators must practice letting go of all thoughts. Okay, so that's the idea, or not become attached to them. All right, so that that's the, the key. All right, so that addresses the cause. Okay, the root cause. All right. Okay, so the implication at the mm, kingdom or social level, society level is that the ruling class value their own lives and fear death. Right. You you bet you bet the ruling class value their own lives and fear death. So they assume the same must be true for everyone. Right, you know, right. So, in a simplistic way, they imagine that if you capture and kill all criminals, then no one will dare to commit crimes. This is not realistic nor true throughout history because this reasoning fails to take the complexities of real life into account. All right. Okay. There are a lot of other factors, right? Why people, as I say, commit crimes or, you know, do things that normally you wouldn't do, right? So that the other factors, you know, it could be social, economic, you know, et cetera, et cetera, okay? All right, so personal level is you may fear physical death through the threat of death, right? Yeah, you, you may fear, okay, so that's how, but you cannot threaten your thoughts with physical death. Only by being able to constantly cherish their own lives, our own lives, we will not cause trouble or commit crimes after. So the key is not to, not to, use fear of death or you know punishment by death etc but that's negative right that's the negative you know approach but rather to use the positive approach which is to have people cherish and value their lives make sure that lives are worth living are worth preserving so therefore then they people will naturally no will not be interested in going and wanting to commit crimes to harm people, et cetera, all right? Okay, so, so instead of relying <clears throat> on our attached minds, that's the conscious ego or self, we need to understand our minds and lives from their root, you know, from the source, to establish from their origin our outlook in life, to be able to cherish ourselves from the source. That's, you know, that, that goes back to our Buddha nature. So, so it's, this refers to, um, uh, we've already talked about that. The respect of the Tao, the virtue, the value of virtue are not of a command, but not. that's from the third line, chapter 51. All right. So let's go look at the summary and the chart. Okay. Here's the summary. Let's look at the summary. What does that tell us? Okay. Here. Okay. So, oops, you know, this thing, it's, it should be third column. Okay. This should be a third column here. It's, 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 it's right here as the human being. Sorry. Human being should be on this column here. Okay. It's, it's valuing the virtue here. That, that's what I want to try to take as for human beings and for mirror things, same thing, same thing. It's this, it's here. It's okay. It's we should protect what matters, sacrifice for future. Time. It's that's the, 
the value, valuing the virtue of living, of life. Okay, so that's what it means. Okay, that's what it means. All right, this is in chapter, um, uh, fifth, uh, sorry, chapter uh, 51. All right, okay. Now, let, let's look at the chart. Let's go to the chart level. Let's go to the chart. Let's go to the chart. Let's go to the chart here. Okay, it's this. Okay, this is the chart. Or, okay, so you have the Tao. Oops, sorry. Ooh, wow, okay, you have the Tao and you have, okay, you have the virtue. Okay, Tao, Tao here and virtue. All right, so, so now we're talking about the virtue part now. Okay, so the virtue is the inherent power. So it, it, it raises and grows living things. Okay, all mirror thing, including humans. So in return, so it's a, it's, it's a virtuous cycle. In return, the humans or, you know, living things value our own life, value their own life. So they cherish and value life. So they would not want to harm life. Okay, so that's, it's, it's a virtuous cycle. All right, so that's what it means. Okay, in chapter 51, all right, this is chapter 51, just like we, in the, from the Tao flipping, because the Tao gives rise or produces everything, then in return, we respect the source of life. Okay, so, so that's what it means. All right, okay, so, so that's, that's what that, that's the, that's the, the idea, the positive approach. Okay, so that, not to use our egoistic, egotist, egoistic minds, but rather to go to the root, to the source. That's the Tao, all right? Okay, so the key is on the internal side, if, if we have a rigid or constant mind, there's no flexibility, no middle ground, just either or, only the extremes, only black and white, no extenuating circumstances, no understanding of the complexity of, complexities of life, then we will just be like the incompetent ruler who only rule through the constant fear of death, okay? Whereas Tao cultivators, would nurture a mind of flexibility and wisdom with the ability to understand complexities of life while still keeping life simple. So that's the, the, the challenge, okay, for, cultiva for Tao cultivators is that you, you have to keep life simple, have a simple life, but yet you have the flexibility and the wisdom to understand the complexities of life, okay? So instead of fearing death, we should fear our attachments to the six senses because they will give rise to thoughts that will harm us. Okay, so for some examples, the fear of your life, the fear that we have in life, let's go to one. Okay, so what are our fears? Okay, what are our fears, right? Okay, so, so there, there are many. This is just a partial list. There are many, okay? Some are negative, some are positive. So there are the fear of disappointment, right? That keeps us from expecting more from yourself internally and others externally, all right? So, so there's the fear of disappointment. There's the fear of betrayal that keeps us from trusting anyone. The fear of failure that keeps you from making an attempt, even making an attempt. Fear of success, it causes us to sabotage ourselves, right? So fear of death, okay, obviously there is the, okay, I, I think chapter 50, life and death, right? Causes you to live an overly cautious and uneventful life. That's chapter 50, right? One in third, right? Our disciples of life. That's what it is. Okay. So how much does fear influence our thinking and approach to life? So we have to, you know, reflect a little bit and what have we missed out on because of fear? So these are some things that we have to, uh, you know, ask ourselves. All right. Okay. So, so anyway, so, all right. So that's, that's, you know, we don't want to have fear govern us. Okay. So govern our lives. All right. Okay. So now let's go to <clears throat> the second section. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> second half. There are always, there always exists a master executioner who kills. So if we substitute for the master executioner to kill. All right. So th th this, these are metaphors. Okay. So literally, okay, this word, this, 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 this term. The second word here means to kill, right? In Chinese, or to execute, you know, to, to kill. The first word here, uh, well, it, it, it means this. I mean, the, the dictionary meaning, it's this. It's, it's well, it's, it's, it could be a verb, okay? 
all right, or it could be a noun. It's basically an officer, a manager, a man, one, to, you, can, you can use it as a verb to manage killing, okay, or a manager of killing, okay, or an officer of killing, you know, the department of killing. So it just means a, a, the chief executioner, okay, or he will, okay, master executioner. Okay, so, so basic meaning of the first phrase is that there is always one who kills as an official duty, official duty, it's, you know, their job. Or one in charge of executions, a master executioner who's always present. That that's what this this phrase this just this, this phrase means. Okay, all right, or, or at least the first half. Okay, first half. Okay. Uh, another meaning is that this executioner though need not be a person. Okay, this master executioner doesn't have to be a person. Okay, that's another way to describe the heavenly net or karma. Remember previous chapter, chapter seventy three, the heavenly net. Right, so so that's another way Lao Tzu is using this term to describe the heavenly net or karma, okay, or karmic retribution to be more precise. Right, so this ever present or you know always constant, right? There's always uh, uh, exist, right? A master executioner is just a metaphor for karma, the law of cause and effect, or the law of rep reciprocity. Okay, or to requite the like for the like. All right, so that's another way to describe. Or the master executioner is a metaphor for. Okay, so, so, <clears throat> so this master executioner is always perfectly impartial. Yeah, it's it's perfectly impartial, unbiased. Okay, you can say, and never fails to dispense the appropriate punishment, including death. Okay. That's how karma works, okay? So thus, someone who walks the negative path will end up with karmic retribution, including up to getting killed, okay? Up to getting killed, all right? So that's how karma is, all right? So karma is unbiased. It has no favoritism. It doesn't play favorites, favorites right? It doesn't have favoritism, biases, and it always will dispense justice, you know? It may take a while, right? It may take multiple lifetimes or even, all right? Okay, doesn't matter, but it eventually will, okay? All right. Now, the second half is if we substitute for the master executioner to kill, what does that mean? It means at the kingdom or society level, it means to substitute for the master execution means the use of capital punishment by a country or society, okay? At the personal level, it means to substitute, uh, to sub means killing from an individual perspective, whether it's one, to our specific action, or two, to our personal approval of such an action. That is to take specific action, to dish out justice according to one's personal judgment is to be a vigilante, okay? Yeah, Batman, right? The vigilantes, okay? Anyway, all right. So this becomes problematic because your personal judgment may not be perfect. You may not see all the different sides of the issue, et cetera. You may be meeting out justice or dishing out just, justice from your perspective, but it may be just, but it may be an injustice from another perspective, which can lead to the affected side responding with their version of justice. This will lead to a vicious cycle of retribution, which means society descends into chaos because everyone is taking the law into their own hands. Right? That's why you have the uh, I mean, in the American culture, uh, you know, at least in the country, they have the, uh, what they call family feuds or, you know, family, you know, or, you know, tribal, like tribal feuds, okay, in other societies, you know, the Hatfields and the McCoys, right, you know, the, those two, those two families are sworn enemies of each other, you know, throughout generations, throughout multiple generations, because of, you know, of, you know, a one, I, I guess say, you know, one, uh, a perceived injustice done by the other, you know, et cetera, to each other, and, and just continues throughout the generations, which is sad. So that's a vicious cycle. I mean, you know, you can find this, true, you know, in other societies throughout history. All right. Okay. So it's a very, you know, negative, you know, uh, negative consequence. Okay. So to approve of capital punishment is to delegate the action that's the killing to other hands, to other people. All right. Although it is indirect and removed, but you are still responsible because you have enabled such an action that is the approval and willing to pay via taxes for capital punishment to take place. So this is a warning for anyone or Dow cultivators to not take the role of the master executioner, right? Because we say, hey, you know, I'm not doing the actual killing. 
I'm not the one that's doing that. I'm not the master executioner, you know. But you know, but I, I I let society take care of it. You know, the government, the whatever, the society. You know, the 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 powers that be. You know, the institutions, the government. You know, that's you know the legal legal institutions to handle it. You know, but even though you are removed and you're not directly, you know, you don't directly have a hand in the actual, you know, carrying out of of the execution of capital punishment, but you indirectly approve it because you pay your taxes, which help fund the legal institutions to, to do such things, right? So, so indirectly, we, we approve of it, okay? So, so that, that's problematic because from a karma perspective, that means even though you have nothing to do with that criminal, you know, let's say he's a mass murderer or whatever, the, the worst, the worst, you know, uh, a murder, there is, you know, that deserves to die, okay, or, you know, in our minds, or, or according to the justice system, you know, that deserves to die. But, but you have nothing to do with that person. I mean, you, 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 no, no relationship, no, no anything, no connection whatsoever. But in your mind, and here's the, that's fair, that's why it's very tricky. In your mind, if you approve of that, if you say, hey, yeah, that guy deserves to die, because, you know, he's an evil person, you know, to live is not fair, because he killed so many people, you know, so, you know, the punishment must equal the crime, you know, you know, he killed people, so therefore he should die, right? So if you think like that, so you approve of that, you know, of killing, meeting up justice, capital, that means you are establishing a comic connection to that person. You know that? You're establishing a connection. You are planting the seed for future karmic connections with that person. <laughs> You know, so so that's why we, we 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 you know we have to be careful. That's why you know if you read Buddha, okay. Well, well, if I have, if we have time today, I don't know if we have enough time. I don't know. I don't know. We could talk about you know what Buddha, you know, said. You know, in one instance regarding one of his chief disciples' death. Okay. Anyway, all right. Okay. So so the implication is this: is that. Oh, there's too much to say. That's uh, the concept of the master executioner mirrors the heavenly net concept of chapter 73. They are different ways of describing the same karmic mechanism that seems to pervade, you know, all reality that you know penetrate all that. That's you know that's throughout that that's infused throughout all reality. So or that's pervasive in all reality. So the legal system itself is also a manifestation of karma. It is not a single person, right? It's not one person, the legal, but it's a system created by society to safeguard itself. Now, this line is speaking out against an individual like you and me taking on the role that you think karma should play. So if karma does not punish those who commit crimes right away, then society uses the legal system to take the place of karma in that instance, right? Right, yeah, right. I mean, so, so okay, all right, okay, so. The master executioner is always present. Okay, it's always present. Let's see. Wow, this goes further down. Okay, wow. Okay, it's always present. Let's, let's go up here. Okay, it's the master executioner is always present. That's karma, right? That's a heavenly net karma. It's always present. They're ready to catch anyone who does not who does something to endanger themselves. Just like from the previous chapter, so maybe those who are bold in reckless or thoughtless daring will be killed because karmic retribution in the case of punishing criminals may not take place in this lifetime, right? I, 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 from karma, from karma standpoint, right? You know, let's say there's a pe person who committed murder and got away with it, okay? So karma did not catch, you know, the karmic retribution did not play out in this lifetime, but it could take, it'll, 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 it'll take, It'll, it'll take place in some future lifetime. So, but in society though, but society, unfortunately, society, I don't want to say we're short-sighted because we can only see one lifetime, not just, just present lifetime. So society, in order to safeguard itself, has no choice but to create a legal system to take place of karma, to take the place of karma, to dispense justice in a reasonably timely manner, right? So, so that's why society... You know, we, we, you know, we came up with this idea says, hey, you know, karma may not, you know, it's not going to play out this lifetime, probably won't play out. So we, we, we're going to take, take its place. And by setting up a justice system, a legal system to catch criminals and to, you know, punish them with death, you know, in this lifetime, you know, that, that will, you know, will be karma, 
you know, I mean, well, well, we'll make sure that that karma, uh, that not, not, not karma, but at least the karmic justice will take place in this lifetime. Okay. So now, is this perfect? Is this a perfect system? No, of course not. There will always be some criminals that will escape justice, even. Okay. Even if we have the best justice system or legal institution in the world, there will still inevitably be some criminals or murderers or whoever that will escape justice. Right. Okay. But karma still will catch up to them eventually, whether in this lifetime or some future lifetime. So this chapter is a warning. It's warning us not to take the place of the master executioner as the judge, jury, and executioner to dispense personal justice. All right. So, all right. So, so this is a warning. Okay. To us to not be vigilantes. And even when we use, okay, so that's number one, a person, to, to, you know, we cannot take the law into our own hands, okay? We cannot be the judge, jury, and executioner, all right? Even though we think it's right, okay? <laughs> even though that, that's the, you know, the, 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 the hard part, okay? Anyway, and even when we use the legal system to dispense justice, so we say, okay, I'm not going to be vigilante, but, but let the legal system, you know, do its job, right? Okay, so we need to be very careful and cautious in the application of capital punishment. We still have to be very, very careful, all right? And realize that when we approve of its use, capital punishment, we are still responsible, however indirect or removed we are from carrying out the punishment, the capital punishment, okay? So now uh, we, we talked a little bit about this in chapter, way back, chapter 38, okay? Uh, almost a year ago. So he said, okay, so let's just let's just take a look at that. Okay, here's the here's what the it's called the Tao. I call it the Tao of Justice, Righteousness. It's 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 to do with righteousness. Okay, justice is a specific part of righteousness. So there's the Tao, and then what is the natural balance, and then how the humans we like to you know get involved. Okay, we like to have our hands in, in the in in this. Okay, so so now divine justice flows naturally comes for everyone soon. That's how karma works. But we take justice in our in our hands and act with specific agenda, either through laws, courts, legal system, legal instances. So the heavenly net is broad and wide, but it's loose, but it's just not okay. So that's the last line. And but then we instead of you know taking place of the heavenly net, we try to do catching ourselves, but get tangled up as a result, such as vigilantism. That's why Lao Tzu recommends Minimal action, just do enough with light touch. Now, here, here's where it, it, it was, uh, this, this chapter 38 does connect to chapter 74, is that the master executioner brings an end to those who go into the doubt, against the doubt. That is one who lives by violence will likely per perish by violence, right? That's in chapter 74, all right? That's, a, that, that's similar to chapter 74, similar to the proverb for all that they take the sword should perish by the sword. That's from Gospel of Matthew. So from the human point of view, though, we hurt ourselves when we resort to killing criminals. How? Because when we take the place of master executioner, such as by the society or nation, we may unwilling, unwittingly harm ourselves. That's the paradox at the heart of capital punishment, right? So we say killing is wrong, right? You know, we, we have laws that says killing wrong, right? Thou should not kill, et cetera, et cetera. Killing is wrong. So if you have killed, if someone's killed, then we are going to kill you as a punishment. <laughs> so then we will do the same wrongs you have done. So that's the contradiction. The, 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 you know, but, but people justify it by saying, hey, it's, um, it's punishment that equals the crime, right? So, you know, so, so if, you, if you kill, then you deserve to be killed. So that's, but it still does not contradict the logic that we think killing is wrong in the first place, right? So anyway, all right, okay. So now the ideal Tao-oriented uh, 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 justice from Lao Tzu's perspective is not, does not necessarily include capital punishment, okay? So uh, remember the Bible that says, uh, vengeance is mine, I will pay, repay, say the Lord. That's from Romans, but it's also quoting from Deuteronomy in the Old Testament, okay? So Lao Tzu is just trying to point out that, you know, Using capital punishment as a means to, to, to rule or, or, or to deter people from, from being criminals is not necessarily the best or most effective manner, okay? So then we'll, we'll get to later on chapter 74, which is this, which is 
if the great carpenter works on the construction project known as reality, that's a metaphor for Tao working via karma. So if we try to use the tools of the great part, we can cut ourselves and become a proxy, you know, substitute for the executioner. That's like proxy for again. All right. So the Tao perspectives and justice is very karmic. All right. They're like the teachings of Buddha. Now, on the human perspective, human side is because the often the consequence, of the, the, the reason why we have uh, injustice, if you will, or whatever, you know, tipping, it's because it's, we often take action or contrive action. That's intent, intentional action with an agenda, you know, with a goal or whatever objective in mind. All right. So Lao Tzu's basic is advocating minimal interference or intervention, but don't go to the extremes of doing nothing either. All right. So, so that's the in between. That's the hard part, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Just taking minimal non attached action, just enough to achieve the goal. Okay. Now, uh, this, this Here's points four we, we haven't talked about in this chapter, which we will, okay, uh, very shortly. All right, let's go back. Let's go back. <clears throat> okay, now let's go to, the, uh, to the, the, the conclusion, okay, the last line, the last line. So uh, last two lines. So it is like substituting for the great carpenter to cut. Those who so 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 this connects this 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 is a follow on from the previous line, which is it's it, if we substitute for the master executioner to kill, it is like substituting for the great carpenter to cut. Those who substitute for the great carpenter or craftsman, you can say, it is rare that they do not hurt their own hands. Okay, all right. So so basic meaning of the first sentence or first phrase it is like substituting for the great carpenter to cut it's like the great carpenter is a master craftsman who can chop cut and trim the temper the wood to exactly the dimensions needed and to be able to perform this work the great carpenter has a variety of tools right for his use all right so there's another metaphor the great carpenter the great carpenter is a metaphor for describing the Tao, the heavenly net and karma or the master execution once again he's using Different, different terms to describe the same thing, all right, okay, or the same idea, okay. So now, here, here's this. The Tao can be seen as the cosmic architect and creator, like the great carpenter or craftsman. When it cuts or trims the wood, it is eliminating the unnecessary in order to create a bill. So I don't know if you ever visit a carpenter's workshop or whatever, or watch, you know, people do a craftsman. You know, they, they, they have raw materials. So, so let's use carpenter because that's an easier analogy. You know, they have a block of wood or, you know, whatever, okay, wood. And, and, then, and then, you know, to create, let's say a table, a chair or anything, okay, cabinet or something, a door, whatever, panel. They have to trim, they have to cut the wood to size, right? And they have to trim off the excess, right? So that's eliminating the unnecessary. So if you, so if you notice in, in every craftsman, craftsman shop or a carpenter shop, there's always wood chips, you know, that's the excess, wood shavings left. Them. So those are the, you know, the unnecessary things, right? That, that you know, to what the, the, the carpenter is building or is making, all right? Okay, so that's like the killing, you know, trimming off, you know, some of the parts of the wood, you know, trimming it off or shaving it off, etc. That's like the killing. That's a metaphor for the killing, okay? So this, so this cutting and trimming of wood by the great carpenter is like substituting for the master executioner, right? you know, for that killing, that's what I'm saying, killing. Okay, so in nature, it's, we see that in nature, reflecting nature. It's, uh, this is manifest as the process of evolution for all living organisms. That is natural selection or survival of the fittest. Okay. So unfortunately, not every species or, or you know, of, 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 of organisms, of, you know, of, of, of animals for that matter, or plants for that matter, will survive, will, will, will continue to thrive, you know, over time, right? Based on what? On the environmental factors, et cetera, et cetera, right? You know, that, that's in that area, right? So certain animals, you know, or species that's not adaptable to this changing environment, et cetera, will not survive. So only the strongest will survive, okay? So that's the natural selection, all right? So that's, that's okay? So, so, so naturally, 
that's how you can say in nature, the Tao kills off those who, 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 who are unable to adapt to survive, right? So, so that's the way it works, okay? All right, all right. So at the general level, okay, okay, if we humans replace nature in creating all things, that is like substituting for the great carpenter, right? That the great carsman, car, uh, craftsman who's creating something, right? So at the society level, that means humans are replacing heaven and earth, that's the master executioner or karma, in carrying out justice, all right? So then the second phrase is that, Okay, those who are substituting for a uh, substitute for the great carpenter. Okay, so by substituting for the great carpenter to cut, humans assign themselves the role of this great carpenter to trim the wood. That's to, to you know, to kill, to take on the role of the max, master executioner. In other words, okay. So in nature, we see that that's the process of ev evolution that already eliminates those who are unfit to continue or participate in life. You know that that are that cannot adapt. To the changing environment or you know circumstances, etc. All right. Okay. So this at the society level, there's a this is a metaphor that is the, those who substitute for the great carpenter. Okay, that's the metaphor for the legal system's implementation of capital punishment. At the personal level, it means it may be a rather attractive fantasy to be the judge, jury, and executioner for some people, such as the heroic notion of being a Vigilante, that's like to take the place or to substitute for the great carpenter, all right? Now, the last phrase is this. <clears throat> okay, let's see how does this work here. Okay, oops, okay. We are neither the master executioner nor the great carpenter. And to act in the fantasy of being one will hurt us. How? The reality is we lack the expertise, knowledge, or understanding of the master executioner or great carpenter. That is how karma works. We, we, we lack the understanding of how karma works. Remember chapter, previous chapter, <clears throat> the heavenly net, you know, it says that what? Even sages have difficulty, right? Even sages find it difficult to have people understand how karma works or how the heavenly net works, right? Okay, so... We do not know all the causes or reasons of karma. So to take the place of karma in implementing justice according to our wishes, we will hurt ourselves in the future because we will perpetuate this vicious cycle of karmic retribution. That is, violence begets violence, hate begets hate, an eye for an eye, a tooth for tooth. All right? So that's what, an eye for an eye, right? A tooth for tooth. All right? Okay? That just perpetuates. Okay? All right? It never ends. So this is why... Okay, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, I do have time. Yeah, I'm over already. Okay, so this is why as style cultivators, we must let go of all karmic affinities. So for example, of karmic affinities and entanglements, there's a story of Guanin Bodhisattva and the old monk, okay? Uh, let me stop here and we will pick up next, um, next week or ne next, next session, all right? To finish chapter 74. Okay, so I like to... Uh, 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 thank. Uh, well, I, I like to uh, ask for the Buddhas and Lao Tzu's uh, understanding, if I uh, uh, guidance, if I said anything wrong or incomplete, and I'll ask for everybody's uh, guidance. Okay. Thank you, everybody. All right.